got three items here from the 2006 case, which produces the second, what I call the second best, some very interesting items which I overlook. This one I don't think I've ever handled, actually. Hog wire produced it. It's pens with a difference. So this is really quite something. It's, um, it's a little pocket pen, ballpoint pen. And it's got that clip at the top, which means you can clip it into your belt or into a, with a string, which is very helpful. And I've got to have then make it work as a pen. So the, 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 the ballpoint pen is that bit in there. You can only see the nib. What you do is simply push like that, and it swivels around the middle. That, that, that swivels. And when you swivel into that position, now you've got a vacant spot there, and you've got the pen here. And it works as a pen. Well, when it's got ink in it. Isn't that a neat idea? That thing I've never seen before. Let's put it back again. Oops, like that. Clip it on your belt, and you've got yourself a travelling pen. Brilliant. The second one is something like something we sold in our shop, the rotaring biros or ballpoint pens. But this is actually a pencil version, which we, I don't think I ever have got more than one of. This is this is very clever German um, engineering. It's a, it's a propelling pencil. And it's got one of those very, very fine points that the Japanese invented, so you don't need to sharpen it. The actual lead itself is incredibly fine, but restrained in a very fine tube. To make it work, you don't push the top, as you expect. What you do with a rotary rung is you bend it as if you're breaking it, like that, to an angle. And as I'm doing that, let's see if we can spot the actual uh, pencil of the um, lead advancing. And now I've got to bend it. As I'm bending it, bum, 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 look, and the pencil advancing. And I'll push that back again and make it do it again. And what I'm doing to do that is an action like that, and that makes it work. Just about does it. So extraordinary. That's something we didn't have. The last item is nothing whatever to do with pins, but it came out of that same year when we were having a puzzle party. And one of my friends, Gary Foshi, is a wonderful metal worker. He thought he'd have a bit of fun with the new euro coins. Well, they're fairly new at this age. This is typically uh, a new a euro two euro piece. And it's something we have in our country now. We have a coin consisting of two metals. One is the outside ring or annulus, and the inside is a different, different material altogether. In fact, it's a different, it's a different piece. So he thought, well, that's a bit of fun. Let's see if I can punch it out. You need some pretty strong clamp to do it. But he did it, not with the two euro piece, but with the one euro piece. So that's how the coin started, but it's already coming, starting to come out, as you can see. And he pushed it out to make that arrangement like that. My goodness me, will he get arrested, do you think? I don't know, but that's how it started. Two pieces pushed together in the, uh, in the, in the mint where they're making them, and he's unpushed them in order to, um, create uh, a bit of fun for people. Now you can use it as a ring, I suppose, on my finger. No, it's not quite big enough to go on my finger. But anyway, it's a bit of fun. And I'm certainly keeping it in my collection because it's something I wouldn't ever spend. 